Good day, my dear students of St. John's High School. I am Ms. Sylvia Navid. Welcome to another class of science. Students, today we'll, we will learn about microorganisms or the term germs we use in our daily life. For that, we see page number 11 and 12 from New Oxford Primary Science, Book 5, Third Edition. My dear students, do you know what are microorganisms? You must have heard the word germs or microorganisms. Although you can easily count large living things that you see, that are millions of living things around you that are very tiny. We call these tiny organisms microorganisms because we need a powerful microscope to see them. Microorganisms are found all over the world, in the air, in water, in soil, in or on our body, and on the surface of every object. In everyday language, people use the word germs when they talk about harmful microorganisms. Do you know students, the branch of science that deals with the study of microorganisms is called microbiology and a person who studies microbiology is called a microbiologist. Do you know students, how many kinds of microorganisms are there? There are four main kinds of microorganisms. These are viruses, protozoa, bacteria, and fungi. They affect the body in different ways. Students, we will learn these all microorganisms one by one. First of all, we will learn about viruses. What viruses are? <coughs> These days, you must have heard that bacteria, viruses, these days you must have heard this word very often. These are smaller than bacteria. Viruses can grow and survive only when they are in the living cells of organisms. They multiply rapidly in warm and moist places. They are harmful to humans, animals and plants and can cause many diseases. Some illnesses caused by a virus in humans are influenza, chickenpox, cold, measles, mumps, hepatitis and nowadays is corona that is most dangerous virus. <coughs> Students, plants too have a viral infection. You all must have to be very careful about touching plants and other things and take necessary measures as described by the World Health Organization. I hope students, you clearly understand what a virus is. Let's start learning about bacteria. What is bacteria? Bacteria are unicellular organisms. They grow and multiply rapidly. Bacterial cells exist in three basic shapes. You can see in the picture students that they have three types of bacteria. They can cause illnesses like typhoid, meningitis and pneumonia. Not all bacteria are harmful. Some of them are very useful for humans, other animals and plants. Students, do you enjoy eating yogurt, cheese and butter? These all are prepared using bacteria. That means some bacteria are our friends. Some bacteria live in your body and help us in the digestion of your food. That's why we call them positive bacteria friend bacteria. Now students, 
let's move to the fungi what are fungi some fungi are unicellular and some are multicellular Cell unicellular means of one cell and multicellular means of more than one cell they can be microscopic and macroscopic that means you only can see them under a microscope but you cannot see them with your naked eyes the fungi includes a vast variety of organisms such as mushrooms yeast and mold i will tell you later what is mold they cannot make their own food and obtain their food from their from other organisms on which they grow you must have seen green mold growing on stale bread and rotting fruits students you can see mold on the bread and on this fruit that is rotting some fungi like mushrooms are edible 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 means that you can eat them but some are poisonous and should not be eaten some fungi obtain nutrients from dead animals and plants these fungi are decomposers fungi decomposes biodegradable litter and make soil fertile means they make soil to regrow things with full nutrients since do you know fungi can also grow on the human body and can cause skin infections like ringworm and athlete's foot you know you need to keep your skin clean to avoid such diseases do you know students that yeast is very useful yeast is a fungus used in making bread and some antibiotics now students we will learn about protozoa what is protozoa protozoa are unicellular organisms rather like bacteria if they enter the body they can live and grow they grow in moist places and are commonly found in water dysentery is caused by a protozoan and so is diarrhea that means you have to be careful while drinking water you have to drink fresh water all right students now you have to learn that uh, how microorganisms enter our body i hope you understand up about microorganisms or germs now you have to learn that how these germs or microorganisms enter our body these germs enter our body and make us sick how well students these germs enter our body through air through mosquito bite through infected food and water through cuts in your skin all right students to stay healthy read these points very carefully to control the spread of diseases we have to ventilate the house well to allow fresh air to circulate air clothes and bedding in fresh air and sunlight boil milk to kill the germs it contains sneeze into a handkerchief a tissue or the crook of your elbow crook mo means your elbow's side back side and if you are sick you are not supposed to share your personal things with your friends either with your siblings or your parents well students and what else you have to do you have you have to keep the water the drinking water that you drink and the food you eat you have to keep both of these things well covered 
and clean. You have to keep the surroundings around you clean by using disinfectants. You have to get yourself vaccinated by the doctor every time. I hope students you understand what are microorganisms or what are germs. So what you have to do you have to do your homework now. You have to answer the following questions. You have to answer the questions given below and question number one is what are the main kinds of microorganisms? You already have heard in the lesson that what the microorganisms and what are the main kinds of microorganisms and question number two is list any six ways in which microorganisms can enter your body. Students what do you have to do? You have to do this homework on full scale sheet, punch it in a file, write your name and class on it and submit in the school office on any Tuesday. And, and students, I wish you all the good health and best wishes. Thank you.